ho, ho. Merry Christmas. And welcome back to the Fit Finance Sessions Advent Calendar. Today, we're going to have a look at an even more harem scaring idea, the Enterprise Investment Scheme. Tom, what's one of them? <laughs> um, so Enterprise Investment Schemes, or EISs, um, have started to become more, more popular and bit like when we were talking about venture capital trusts it's investments in smaller companies but with an eis it's it's even smaller and you can go smaller again with a seed eis um so really small companies and and the risk spectrum goes up um there's a much bigger risk of um of these investments failing um equally you can have really good returns out of them um so it's not it's not always doom and gloom, but it's definitely got to be money that you're not reliant on um, or surplus to, 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 your, to your needs. Um, there's strict rules about how small the company is and what market it operates in to qualify. Um, but lots of smaller companies are using these to, to raise capital. I think these days you even see adverts on, on, on the tube of companies saying, EIS compliant and, and, and things like that. Um, but the main benefits from an investor, rather than obviously, hopefully, some, some good returns, are 30% income tax relief on, um, on investment, deferral of any capital gains, and um, also two, after two years of holding, you get inheritance tax free on, on that investment as well. And you can roll over the benefits. Um, and even if you were, even if you had a large tax bill in the year before, with an EIS, you can go back back one year. Um, CDIS is um, is a little bit more aggressive, where fifty percent income tax, fifty percent uh, capital gains um, write off, as far as I'm, uh, as I'm aware. Um, but again, the risk profile is much much higher, and you tend to find people investing in things that suit them. So if you're into uh, motorsports you might do a motorsports eis or horse racing or whatever it is um or you might just not care and just want one nice tax relief but um yeah it tends to be uh, uh much smaller companies more risk and something may be more personal to you excellent excellent i should be looking out as father christmas for the reindeer farming eis in due course go on tim sock it to me why shouldn't i invest in a reindeer farm yeah, well, it's, it's got to be, you know, risk, risk, risk again. Um, I mean, I think Tom's already compared VCT to VCT with but I was just thinking of my analogy. The best one I can come up with in this couple of minutes was, was like going to a theme park and uh, the EIS and the CIS is, are, is the you know, biggest, scariest roller coaster that you can get on, um, but you only have to go on it for three years or three times that let's use it. You can give that analogy. Whereas um, the VCT is the less scary. No loop to loops, barely goes upside down, um, but you have to go on into five years. You know, they're both roller coasters at the end of the day, um, but the EIS and the CDIS are the, the sort of the, the daddies of the, of the situation, giving you more tax relief, um, but for a smaller uh, holding period. So after three years, you can get rid of um, these shares and retain the tax relief. But um, no idea whether or not that analogy helps anybody, um, but it's, it's the only way to say it. Um, I thought of at least to try and translate all these. All these jargon terms that we're, we're throwing at them and everybody. Well, that's right. I mean, it, our industry does like an acronym, doesn't it? And um, then, oh, then yes. there we are. We've just we've just introduced you to two more in the space of I don't know three minutes. I hope that was useful. Thanks very much, guys. It was useful for me. I'm going out now to go and uh, fund reindeers are us. Um, but until next time, bye bye. <laughs>